All right, guys, welcome to Feature Creatures. This is our channel on YouTube as well as our Facebook page. Uh, so today we are going to be showing you guys how to build a vivarium, just like this 30 gallon that you guys see right here. So today we have this really, really humongous exoterra. I don't know the exact dimensions on it, but I'm just going to show you how we do it. All right, guys, so this is the exoterra that we're gonna be working on. I just have a light up top so we can see it right now. But the first thing that you guys always wanna do when you guys have a bioactive enclosure, for most enclosures, not every single one, but for most, especially if it's gonna hold a lot of water over the lifetime, is that you wanna have a false bottom or just a drainage layer. So we're going to be doing that with these guys right here. So this is just pea gravel, and that is gonna make up the entire false bottom for us. So let me go ahead and pour these guys in, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so now we went ahead and cut the window screen mesh out. So all this is is literally a window screen mesh. It just goes over your window to help keep mosquitoes out. But in our case, it's gonna do a little bit of a different thing. It's still gonna be a barrier, but it's just not gonna be a barrier against the mosquitoes anymore. So if we, when we put this on the rocks, when we use pea gravel or something small like this to create a false bottom, it's easier to get that flat. And uh, once you get that flat, you, could put, you can cut it to the dimensions of the tank and just put it exactly across the rocks. I cut mine just a little bit larger just so the back part can curl up just a little bit. But I do want that front part to be flat so you don't really see the difference between, you see just a clear division between the rocks and the dirt and you don't see them blending together. So then now that that is done, now we're going to add the main part of the enclosure, which is gonna be the substrate. I'm gonna show you guys what mix I use for my, strips, my substrate as well. All right guys, so this is the bin that we're actually gonna mix all of our uh, materials in. So what I got right here is I got some water um, some distilled water or, you know, deep chlorinated water. And I got sphagnum moss. I got the dirt that we like to use, especially that we breed all of our isopods in, as well as all of our sanitized leaves that we got, that we uh, got and sanitized this fall. So there's a lot of different stuff in here, as in like little sticks and stuff like that that will be good for the enclosure overall. So we're going to start off with the dirt. So this dirt, if you guys want to a little bit closer you guys can go ahead and see the consistency of this which is not just like a regular regular dirt there's like little wood chips and stuff like that in there which i think is a great base to have a nice aeration within your dirt and then the sphagnum moss is going to add on to that so what i'm going to do now is just mix some of this dirt in i'm only going to do a little bit at the, a little bit at a time because it is kind of hard to mix the dirt with sphagnum moss once you put a little bit too much in there come take a look at this dirt and the consistency of it so it's not just plain it's not just regular dirt um, there is like little parts of wood chips and other it is all organic so organic wood and that's going to be a great food over the lifetime for the isopods and all the other decomposers that we do put inside which are also called microfauna so then what i'm also going to do here is now i'm going to add leaves to this so the leaves are going to be some of the main food sources so I like the dirt because it has some of the wood, but these leaves are going to be some of the main food, is going to be like the main food source for the isopods and microfauna that we put in here, including the springtails. So it does seem like I am putting a lot in here, but don't worry, over time this is all going to be mixed in. The sphagnum moss is also going to help aerate it. We're going to give it a nice watering, and then once we do that, it's just like that. I feel like that is enough. And then once we put just the sphagnum moss like this in there. This is the same sphagnum moss that we use obviously for all of our other enclosures. There's sphagnum moss in this tank. If you want to take a look right here, you can see the sphagnum moss right in that tank right there and right there. There's sphagnum moss in that enclosure as well. And that enclosure has been thriving for around eight months now. So what I'm going to do here is just break up the sphagnum moss. Obviously it is all dried. But then, like I said, when we got all these extra leaves and extra pieces of wood, that's even a, a great, great component for the longevity of this enclosure. So this enclosure, I'm actually going to be moving my lizard, Anneli, inside this enclosure and uh, start getting her a few friends, as well as putting some of my other isopod species in here. So, but first, this is just going to be a part one of the video, because part two is us actually going to get the different plants to put in there. Say I'm going to put a golden pothos, but I do want to look into some other plants to put in there. So then I would say this is about as much as you would need. You can obviously go a little bit less if you want to feed your roly polies and 
you could be a little bit more interactive with your enclosure. But I know since I'm going to be building a lot, I can't be as interactive probably as I want to in the future. So I'm going to set it up correctly now. And before I mix that, let me go ahead and water it. So once the sphagnum moss gets wet and it goes ahead and uh, you put it inside of your enclosure, it's going to stay damp and moist. This is going to help a lot of aeration and a lot of air to just be within the soil. That's going to be good for the earthworms, for the springtails, for the uh, isopods, and give them a lot of different places to travel inside of the enclosure. So I am going to put a lot of water this first time, and then I'll just top off or just spritz it with water every watering after this. Now, once I set up this enclosure before, I only had to water this enclosure one time um, every month. And it was enough for the lizard, which is a Nelly. She's still in that 30 gallon right there. And uh, enough for some other lizards that I had before um, to be in their enclosure. And then this one, since it is a little bit bigger, I am gonna be putting a water bowl at the bottom. So like I said, that is enough water for now. Now we're just gonna go to mixing. And you just wanna get it to where it's a nice consistency all around because this is only part of the substrate. This is just the first one. And once we mix this as much as I think is necessary, then we'll go ahead and mix the rest of the bag because I do want to get this enclosure almost up to that lid or up to that uh, black bar right there. Just this one right here. I want to get it as close as I can to that. So once I plant it, the plants have enough root growth and then uh, whichever animal I do decide to put in here, like another lizard or something else, they'll have a lot of places to be able to dig and furrow inside of that enclosure. So if you look at this, this consistency is exactly what you want for your enclosure. It has leaves or sticks in here. It has all the leaves, the sphagnum moss. It is nice, damp, and wet dirt. So then this is exactly what I want. So I'm going to dump this one in and then go ahead and make another one. All right, guys, so this is the dirt. The mixture that we just did, all going inside the enclosure. So that is a lot that's in there. With this, you don't want to pack it down. But you do just want to level it out. And this, I'm not even worried about anything uh, not surviving in here, because this is like, one of the best mixtures that I've come up with. And sometimes I do add other stuff, but for now, this is kind of like a base mixture that you do want to put in there. I've tried the dirts, but I never liked how they went or how they turned out in general. So now I made this mixture and it has been one of the best mixtures for any like subtropical or tropical um, plants and animals. So it has been great in here. And this one, if you look up, obviously this Exoterra has a window screen mesh um, on top, just an aluminum one. So there's gonna be more aeration throughout this. Um, depending on which animal I put in here, other than uh, Nelly, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a humidifier or just leave it as is and just spray it more often. So then let's go ahead and go over here. So then now we're just going to make one more bit of this and just try and fill that up. So you see right now it's almost halfway filled. So we're going to just use the rest of this bag and then fill up the rest of it. So I'll be right back. guys so i went ahead and mixed this one up and to me that looks great all isopods are going to have tons and tons and tons of places to stay and obviously we are going to put some uh leaves on the top of the soil so there's going to be plenty of us uh plenty of leaves within the soil and then all this ones that are going to be on top it's going to be a great 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 environment for all of your anoles all of your animals that um and all your microfauna that's going to be put in here i do plan on putting some millipedes and some other stuff trying out some new things in here uh, that i haven't had before but yeah let's go ahead and dump this one in there all right guys, so I went ahead and I filled up uh, the dirt and all the enclosure with all the mixture that I just put with the leaves, the sphagnum moss, as well as the, the different type of dirt that I used with the, uh, with the wood and the wood chips in it. So it has a lot of, lot, a lot of different components to put the microphone in here. So today I'm gonna to start off with just putting the springtails in and then tomorrow, or uh, then when we end up picking up the camera, I will go ahead and just get the plants and everything else and actually uh, escape this enclosure. But for now, if you do wanna come in and take a look, we do have about two inches of the pebble down there. So if I were to overwater one day, then uh, the rest of the excess water is just going to go right down here and sit down there. And the plants, like this enclosure, if you take a look at the bottom, 
if they do get any thirstier or uh, as well as just when they're growing, they will grow their roots going all the way down to the false bottom. So uh, the water won't just be trapped down here, the plants will absorb it and that's why the plants in that tank is thriving. Here's an actual uh, little picture of the enclosure when it was thriving or when I just first planted it compared to now. Uh, there has been a miraculous, a huge change within there. So with this one, you guys let me know down in the comments what uh, microphone you guys want me to put in here as well as check out our website and see the different species of roly polies that we have. Um, and then we do have some more other ones that we can put in there as well. But uh, yeah, just give me some ideas of what you guys want me to do with this tank and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.